decide whether each of the following equations is an identity, use a graph. If the equation is an identity, prove it. If the equation is not an identity, find the value of x for which it is false. Secant x plus tan x equals 1 plus sine x over cosine x. I have no intuition about whether or not that might be true. So I've um, typed in both equations, both the left-hand side, both expressions, I should say, left-hand side and the right-hand side separately. Notice that I've also made the one thicker. I'm in radian mode, and I'm just going to look at the standard window. So that crazy-looking graph is the graph of this first one. Kind of looks like tangent, but apparently it's been shifted a little bit. And then the thick one is the second one, and it looks like it's landing perfectly on top of the first one. So that's pretty compelling evidence that this is, in fact, an identity. So let's spend some time trying to prove it. Okay, so again, I'll do the first thing I always do, which is write the two things separately, and then um, the big red line in between. And that makes sure that I don't go around and do things to both sides of the equation, like treating it like it's an equation. It's what it looks like, but it's not an equation to be solved, so we can't do anything to both sides of the equation. Got to separate them like this. Okay, uh, so um, secant plus tan versus 1 plus sine x over cosine x. I, I don't really know what to do. Um, I guess I'm tempted to, uh, to maybe change things to sine and cosine. I said I, I don't think that's like a, the greatest technique, but let's try it. So secant is really 1 over cosine of x. Tangent is really sine over cosine of x. Always keeping an eye on what you're trying to head to, we say, oh gosh, this is really close already. Uh, these two fractions have the same denominator, so we're in position to just combine and make one fraction. And just like that, we're done. An alternative to that would have been to take this thing and split it up. I'll write it, then I'll erase it. Split this up into two fractions, one over cosine plus sine over cosine, and then recognize that these are two other trig functions, 1 over cosine is secant, sine over cosine is tangent. It's the same process that we just worked through, but uh, just so you think of that as an alternative. Okay, number two, sine of x plus pi equals sine of x plus sine of pi. All right, I do have intuition about that. I don't see any reason why that should be true, so I feel like uh, this one is probably not going to work out. Uh, if, if it were true, I guess I, I feel like I should have seen it by now. Sine of x plus pi. So that's just the sine curve shifted to the left by pi. Oh, and then it's definitely not going to work, right? Because this is the sine curve shifted up by some number, whatever sine of pi is. That's just zero. Uh, okay, so uh, that's fine there. And then we'll do sine of x plus sine of pi. It's kind of silly to type sine of pi because we know that's nothing. But uh, let's graph both of them. So there's your sine of x plus pi graph, and then something very different indeed, which is the right-hand side. So it's definitely not an identity. Looking at the picture, we see two different things. Uh, the instructions here said if it's not an identity, find the value of x for which it's false. So all you got to do is pick uh, just about any number you want for x and make sure that the uh, two sides are not equal. So uh, one thing you could do, for example, is just say let x equal 0, and then uh, that's easy enough to plug in. So this would say sine of 0 plus pi uh, equals, with a question mark, I'm hoping it doesn't, sine of 0 plus sine of pi. Okay, let's see, sine of 0 plus pi, that's really sine of pi, which is 0, equals uh, sine of 0 is also 0 plus sine of pi is another 0, and in fact, this equation is true. Okay, this is unfortunate. It doesn't mean that it really is an identity. It just means that we got a little bit unlucky and we picked a value of x where those two curves actually intersected each other. And the curves intersect in many places. All we had to do is pick one that wasn't one of those intersections. They could pick this point, you know, like this point right here, but we ended up picking x equals zero, which is where they cross each other. So um, my suggestion for you when you're trying to find the value of x for which the thing doesn't work, is pick some crazy number, not 0, not pi, not 1, not negative 1. Uh, how about x equals 17? So 17 radians seems uh, sufficiently crazy that, that this shouldn't be equal. So sine of 17 plus pi equals, with a question mark, sine of 17 plus sine of pi. And this is something that we'll have to use the calculator to help us. 
So what do we have here? Sine of 17 plus pi. Apparently is that number. And then sine of 17 plus, and again, it's silly to type sine of pi because that's zero, but it's that number. And they're not equal to each other. They are the opposites. And maybe that's not so surprising if you think about the graph. Um, what we just saw is that, for example, if you pick uh, 17, it's not here, but if you did, uh, one of the graphs is up here at some number, and the other graph is down here at the same number but opposite. But definitely not equal. So um, we'll just write down here, this was uh, 0.96 is equal, nope, to negative 0.96. So as soon as we see that, we know definitively not an identity. Three, cosine squared times cosecant equals cosecant minus sine. No idea whether or not that might be true. So let's try typing both sides into the y equals. I'll pause the video and type it in. Okay, so I've typed both of them in here. Again, make sure you're comfortable uh, typing something instead of these cosecants. It's one over sine. And again, I've uh, made the second one thick. So standard window is probably okay here. So that graph right there is the left hand side and eventually we'll see the right hand side and if it shades in then we've probably got an identity and that looks like it's matching up pretty well with what's already there so pretty convincing evidence that we've got an identity so let's give it a shot and try to do some of this algebra here so we'll start the way we always start two sides with a line that cannot be crossed Okay, so let's give this a shot. Uh, what do we have here? Um, so uh, my first reactions are to either uh, change this thing here into one minus sine squared. And there's a sine over here, so that's kind of cool. Um, second reaction is to change these guys into one over sine and then see what happens. I'm gonna go with my second reaction. Maybe the first one would go somewhere, I don't know. So cosine squared times one over sine. And then completely separately over here, 1 over sine minus sine. Okay, I don't see a natural place to go on the left-hand side other than changing cosine squared to 1 minus sine squared. But there is a natural thing to do over here, and that's combine and make one fraction. So let's do that. 1 over sine x minus, and then we'll multiply here by sine x on the bottom, which means sine x on the top multiplied by the sine x that was already there, the sine squared. Okay, now we'll combine one minus sine squared over sine. Oh, and that feels very good to me because one minus sine squared, anytime I see that, that automatically changes to a cosine squared. And I guess technically that doesn't look exactly the same as what's over here, so let's say we multiply these fractions and now make them look exactly the same. And so equal expressions, so we've proven our identity. And um, I'm trying to give you a sense of the thought process that I go through. Oftentimes it, it feels like I'm just kind of um, groping around in the dark. I, I don't know exactly where things are headed. Um, you know, with a lot of the problems we do this semester, I can see my way all the way through this through to the solution. There are just some standard techniques that I know how to solve standard problems with, and I know that they're going to work. But with identities, there's there's not a whole lot of standardization. There's a lot of um, uh, a lot of kind of freewheeling, and um, and that means you got to be creative. And for some students, that's a good thing. It's an opportunity to kind of think outside the box and just explore and follow your intuition. Other students want a step-by-step -step process that they can follow. And I will say here that that math is not a step-by-step paint-by-the-numbers process that you can follow. So I quite like. Um, these identities because they're different from the standard problems that you might see in a math class. Let's try four. So the first thing I'll do is type both sides into the calculator. And I'll pause the video while I do that. Okay, so I think I've typed these in correctly. Uh, we'll go ahead and hit graph. So I wouldn't have been able to guess what secant x minus tan x squared looks like. Apparently it's that. And then looks like it's getting graphed right over. So probably this is another identity. And it's our job to prove it. 
Again, it might be tempting to like cross multiply here or try to clear fractions on the right hand side, but you don't have a right hand side to play with. We don't have, well, we have just a right hand side, but we don't have an equation to play with. So again, get in a good habit of just um, writing each side separately and then playing with them separately. There's no interaction between these two things. We're just hoping eventually they both get down to identical expressions. Okay, uh, so what do we do here? I don't know. Uh, I have a couple of impressions. Um, one thing we could do is change secant and tangent into um, sines and cosines. Another thing we could do is uh, square this, you know, like foil this thing together, and, and that sounds pretty promising to me um, because uh, that would give me a secant squared and a tan squared, and I have an identity that relates secant squared and tan squared. So maybe something good will happen. I can't see it all the way to the end but there's potential there. Over here, uh, one thing you could do um, is uh, multiply up here by one plus sine x and do the same thing down here. And the reason that's promising is because one minus sine x times one plus sine x is one minus sine squared x, which is really cosine squared x. So uh, those are my initial impressions. I'm gonna start by foiling the left-hand side and just see where that goes. So let's see. Uh, write secant x minus tan x twice if you need to see the foil, but we get secant squared x minus 2 secant x tan x plus tan squared x. Okay, so it looks kind of bad, but it is what it is. Um, and uh, the question is, is that secant squared and tan squared, is that something we can work with? So I'll just remind us of a Pythagorean identity that we have. Uh, we know that uh, tan squared x plus one is really equal to secant squared x. So things aren't quite as nice as I was hoping. Like I said, I couldn't see all the way through. Um, I was really hoping that secant squared plus tan squared would just be this magical one, but unfortunately it doesn't quite work. Um, you can solve for one of them and move it to the other side, but it's not quite as nice as I was hoping. So the next thought that I have is to continue playing with the left-hand side and now rewrite everything in terms of sine and cosine so that eventually maybe we can get it around to look like this thing, which has only sine in it. So it's going to get messy before it gets better, but let's just push through and see what happens. Secant is really 1 over cosine. So secant squared is 1 over cosine squared minus 2 times. Okay, uh, secant again is 1 over cosine. Tangent is sine over cosine. <clears throat> And then this tangent is also sine over cosine, but it's squared. So that squared comes in and hits both parts. Okay, and actually I kind of like what's about to happen here. I'll copy this first fraction, just merge everything together. So this is really a two sine x over cosine squared in the middle, plus sine squared over cosine squared. And what I really like about these three fractions is that they already have the same denominator. So a very natural thing to do at this point is um, merge them all together and get just one nicer looking fraction. So upstairs, I'll just copy one minus uh, two sine x plus sine squared x. Okay, so I've got that. I don't, I don't have a natural place to go from there. So maybe at this point, we'll just take a sneak peek again at the goal. Again, you're not allowed to, um, to work with the two sides. You can't multiply both sides by five, but you're certainly allowed to take a look at where you're headed. And whenever I need guidance, I take a look at where I'm headed. So let's see here. Um, I want a one plus sine x on the bottom and a one minus sine x on the top. Here, I've got a cosine squared on the bottom and then one minus two sine x on the top. Um, I don't really know. I have a couple of ideas at this moment. So I'll give you the, the standard idea and then the, the idea that might be asking a little bit too much of um, of a pre-calculus student, but I'll give you both. Um, so the standard thing to do is to change this into a one minus sine squared of x. And why don't we just give that a shot? Uh, and the, the reason that's kind of a nice thing to do is that up here it's a one plus sine x, and over here it's going to be one minus sine squared, and at least they then have the same trig function. They both have sine in it. So um, let's take a look. So I'm just going to copy the top, one minus two sine x plus sine squared of x, divided by cosine squared becomes one minus sine squared. 
Oh, well, that's actually kind of nice because if you factor the bottom, then the bottom is going to really start to look like the bottom that we want. So let's factor the bottom, 1 minus sine x times 1 plus sine x. And you're starting to see the same kind of factoring over and over again. This is pretty, um, pretty standard with uh, trig equations is that kind of factoring. Okay, well, that's looking really good because, again, taking a sneak peek over here, we see that 1 plus sine x is the goal downstairs, and now all of a sudden I do have a 1 plus sine x down there. Got some other stuff down there, but at least I've got part of it. So apparently this 1 minus sine x has got to cancel with something upstairs. But in its current form, this thing is not cancel ready, if that makes sense. I can't cancel anything here with this because this is addition and subtraction and not multiplication. So that leads me to believe that perhaps I should be factoring this thing, if it factors at all. Okay, so let's give it a shot. Okay, let's see. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start with the 1. 1 there, 1 there, and we need the, the sine x at the end. That's how we're going to get our sine squared. And what about the signs here? Let's see, I think we need them both to be minus. And if you foil that together, oh, hooray, it works. Uh, outers and inners here, outers is a negative sine x, inners is another negative sine x, and lo and behold, that's negative 2 sine x, which is just groovy because the 1 minus sine x here cancels, and we are left with something that looks wonderful because I think this was the goal. So we will circle this guy in green, 1 minus sine x over 1 plus sine x. And then back upstairs here, we did nothing with the right-hand side, 1 minus sine x over 1 plus sine x. So you can see these identities can be quite tricky. Um, I, uh, I didn't take any missteps in making this video. I was kind of hoping I would, just so that you'd see that missteps are a part of making these identity or proving identities. But trust me when I say I have made many more missteps proving identities in my life than you ever will in yours. And so um, just recognize that, uh, that taking some, um, some dead-end trips is just part of the process with proving these identities. So do not despair and see if you can push through. If the first thing that you try doesn't work, it's totally fine. Try something different. And the last thing I'll say in this video is that I had uh, suggested that I had another thought about what to do with this thing, but that might be too much to ask of a pre-calc student, and I still don't know how I feel about it, but um, but I'll say that the thought that I had, I just wrote some stuff down, and it goes absolutely nowhere. Well, I, I guess it goes exactly here, but in a uh, much less straightforward way. So um, so sorry to promise something that I didn't deliver, but I don't have any other um, any other suggestions on a way to get from here to the final answer.